All right, good morning. Welcome to our Sunday school service. Glad to see everybody here. All right, uh, before we open in a word of prayer, does uh, anyone have any special requests they'd like to make? Now let's pray for our country. Uh, you know, and, uh, and, and speaking of that, I mean, there's, you know, there, there's also some Christians, you know, within the Ukraine. So, so let's remember that as well. Uh, you know, because of the fact that Russia is uh, very strict on, on any kind of religious freedom. You know, if they end up, uh, you know, annexing any part of it, then they'll come under persecution. All right? Anybody else? All right, then let's go ahead and uh, open here in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for bringing us all here together this morning, Lord. God, we thank you so much that we're able to assemble here and worship your name freely, God. Uh, God, we ask that uh, you, you would be with our, you know, with, with our country you know, as uh, you know, we, we may have turned the, the corner with, uh, you know, the pandemic, but we have, uh, you know, many things within the world that, uh, you know, that we're worried about, Lord. And uh, God, we just pray that you would be with the, uh, you know, the country of Ukraine as, you know, they were, uh, as they were attacked, Lord, and that you would be with uh, the, you know, the many Christians there, Lord. We, you know, we know that you'll make sure that you have your hedge of protection around them, and that they're, they're able to continue to worship you and continue to pray and, uh, you know, continue to, to, to do your work, Lord. And uh, God, we just, you know, you use that to want to be more thankful for what, what we have here, Lord. And uh, God, I pray that you would be with, uh, you know, the many requests that, you know, we have in our bulletin, Lord, and, you know, the, the many requests that I'm sure that, you know, haven't been spoken today, Lord, you know, we ask that you be with those that are, you know, you know have COVID or been battling COVID or, been, and, you know, those that are sick and, Lord, anyone that may have lost loved ones this week and, uh, God, we just pray that you would be with uh, each and every one of us this morning as we go through your word that you would allow us to be, you know, lifted up and allow our focus to be on you and everything that you do, Lord, and, God, we just pray that we turn everything over to you and allow us to fully worship you this morning. Amen. All right, well, let's uh, continue forward here in, uh, in, in Genesis. So <clears throat> we're, we're going to see here uh, you know, Ab Abraham arranging Isaac's marriage. You know, this is going to be his, his last... Uh, and one of the last things that he, uh, you know, faithfully does before everything is, uh, you know, turned over and we start to focus more on Isaac. And so, uh, you know, setting this up here, uh, you know, Sarah had, uh, had, had passed away at this point. Uh, you know, let's, uh, let's look at a couple of places in chapter 23 and, and, uh, we'll, and then we'll start into 24. So I'm going to look at uh, verses 1 and 2, and then, uh, and then we'll look at uh, you know, 19 and 20 in, uh, in chapter 23. And it says, And Sarah was a hundred and, and seven and twenty years old. Uh, these were the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died in uh, Kir Kirjarba, uh, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. And then as uh, we, we close out uh, that chapter with uh, verses 19 and 20, it says, uh, And after this, Abraham buried uh, Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of uh, Machpelah before uh, Mamre, uh, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan. And the field and the cave uh, that is therein uh, were made sure unto Abraham for possession of a burying place by the sons of Heath. So, you know, that's where their, their, their burying place is going to be. Sarah has passed away. And... Uh, you know, Abraham wants to make sure that before he passes away that Isaac has a wife and, you know, Isaac's able to, uh, you know, continue forward here. And so uh, let's look at, let's start in, let's look at the first uh, verses here in, uh, in chapter 24. Let's look at uh, 1 through uh, 3. All right, and Abraham was old and well, and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant that ruled over all the land, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, 
and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I, whom I dwell. And so, uh, you, you know, here we see that, uh, you know, Abraham is, is you know, speaking to his servant. You know, he's, he's up here in, in years, and he's going to go to his eldest servant, you know, the one that's, that's served the longest, been with him the longest, the, 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 you know, his, his wisest servant. And you know, he asks him, uh, and you know he has a charge of everything that he has, and so he has this this extra thing to ask him. You know this 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 one last big thing, and he asks him to to swear unto him, you know, by God, the Lord of heaven and and, and of earth, that uh, yeah he's not going. That Isaac will not take a wife out of the Canaanites. That, that you know he's going to uh, make sure that everything is from his own country, uh, which is uh, you know where and. You know, Abraham is from Ur of the of the Chaldees, and so he wants to make sure that that's that's where he's coming from. And then let's look at uh, at verse nine here. So, you know, he 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 asks him solemnly to do that, and uh, and the servant does, and so and says uh, in twenty four in verse nine, and the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swear to uh, and swear to him concerning concerning the matter. You know, so, so we see that uh, you know, he's, he's asked his servant to do this thing, and his servant you know, is, is willing to do that for his master, and he swears. All right, so let's look at uh, verses uh, 4 through 8 here. And let, let's look at the uh, specifics of this request here. <clears throat> he says, But thou shalt go unto my country, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said uh, unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me into this land. Must I needs to bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? And Abraham said, uh, Beware that thou bring him not, my son, thither. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, which spake unto me, and swear unto me this day, saying, Unto thy seed I will give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this oath. Only bring not my son thither again. Okay, so he asked him to go out into, the, into, the, into, into his own country and you know, get, that, uh, get that wife for him. And we see Abraham's faith here. Uh, you know, the, the servant says, well, what if I go there and I, I can't find a woman for, you know, for, for your son? Should I bring your son in, in, into the land? And you know, based on the fact that the, you know, the promise was that they would have this land that, that they're, they're living in, he says, no, no, he's going to stay here. And uh, you know, if, if for some reason that you, you don't get this woman to, uh, or a woman to come back with you to, to marry my son from my country, you know, I'll, I'll release you from this oath. But you know, he, he knows and has this faith in God that when he goes out there and his servant goes out there that uh, he's going to bring back that uh, wife for, for his son. You know, he's, he's not worried about it. You know, we can see just how much Abraham has grown and how he's not worried about this. All right, so let's look at these, uh, let's look at the, these next verses, verses. So we're gonna look at you know, what he's been uh, told to do here or, or where he sets out. So let's look at 10 through 14. And the servant took 10 camels of the camels of his master and departed, for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went into Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water. At the time of the evening, even the time that the, that the, women, that the women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master, I pray thee, Send me good speed this day, and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall, she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be that shall hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And, therefore, and, and thereby I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master." Okay, so we, we look and he, he goes out and he goes out into uh, Mesopotamia into the city of Nahor. And uh, you know, that uh, is, is Abraham's, 
a grandfather and also the name of his uh, brother as well. Let's, let's look for a moment at, uh, at his family tree. So that, that's, uh, let's look at verses, uh, let's go back to chapter 11 and verses uh, 22 through 26. Right, it says, uh, And Sarag lived thirty years and begat Nahor. And Sarag lived after, uh, after he begat Nahor two hundred years and begat sons and daughters. And Nahor lived nine hundred and twenty years and begat uh, Terah. And uh, Nahor lived after he begat uh, Terah a hundred and nineteen years and begat sons and daughters. And Terah lived seventy years and begat Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. And so you know, we, we see some of the, uh, so we see here that you know, this is the city of his, uh, of his grandfather and his brother that, that, that he sent him out to, you know, his, uh, you know, of his own countrymen. And, and, and we see that, you know, these, uh, I think it's amazing that when you, when you look and really dig into it and read that these, that you see just how important these genealogies are. Like you, you get to this point and you're like, well, who is that? You know, you can go back and look at these uh, genealogies and, and, and see the, the relation and see how God is, has went through and blessed these families. Uh, but he's out in this, uh, in this city and he, he stops by the well of the water, or by that well of water at the time when the, in the evening when the women are gonna come out and, uh, and draw water so that he will have a chance to, uh, you know, see, you know see the women there and be able to hopefully pick out that uh, bride for, for Isaac. And we see here that uh, you know, immediately the first thing that he does is he begins praying to God. And uh, you know, he, he says, you know, o, o Lord, God of my master, and that's not because he's an unbeliever, but it's because you know, Abraham has, has sent him on this journey. So you know, he, he calls on uh, you know, God, the God of Abraham. You know, he's calling on the God of his master is the reason why he's uh, you know, calling uh, Calling, saying that it is is the God of Ab that uh, you know that's God of my master Abraham, and you know, he he prays you know, here to to send him good speed and show kindness unto my master. You know he he's not worried about himself. You know he doesn't want to be successful, the servant here, uh, you know to make himself look look good. He wants to be successful for Abraham, and uh, and for Isaac, and so. Uh, you know, through this prayer, you know, he, he, asks, uh, he asks God specifically to you know, show him this damsel, you know, and the, you know, this, this young woman. And uh, you know, he says that, you know, this young woman is, he's going to ask for you know, that, uh, some water. For, and she's going to lower her pitcher down and give him water. And not only that, she's going to go above and beyond and let his camels drink as well. And, you know, he has ten camels, and I'm sure that they are you know, going to be very thirsty after this long trek. I believe it was like 450 miles between the, the two places. And uh, you know, camels can drink a lot of water. And so, you know, she's, she's going to be, you know, very, very serving. And, and, uh, and so, you know, he's, he's going to know that this, by, by, by her kindness, that this is the woman that, that's, for, that's for Isaac. And uh, so let's uh, look on at these uh, next verses and uh, let's look at the answer to his prayer here. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebekah came out who was born of uh, uh, Bethuel, son of uh, uh, Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the uh, servant ran to meet her and said, let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, drink, my Lord. And she, ha and she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done uh, giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher unto the trough and ran again into the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And the man wondering uh, at her held his peace to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. All right, so we, we see here that, uh, you know, just, just how quickly God answered that prayer. Before he, he was even done speaking the, the prayer, Rebecca came out. 
And, uh, you know, again, we, we see that she fulfills, you know, what, what had been asked because, she, you know, she is you know, related, to, re related to Abraham and, uh, you know, through his brother Nahor. Like we see that uh, we can go back and, you know, again, we can look at, uh, let me look back here to, uh, back to chapter 11 here and let's look at, uh, uh, verse 29. And Abraham and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarah, and the name of Nahor's wife was uh, uh, Milcal, the, the daughter of Haran, the father of Michal, and the father of Ishgar. And then uh, yeah, we, we, it goes on down and, and gives also, you know, her, you know, her children. And so we see that, you know, it's that it is, you know, from his country, you know, from his his family tree, as as requested, and uh, and and we see that uh, you know he, the servant sees her, and he runs to meet her, and he and he asks, for that little bit of water, and uh, you know immediately she does just as, just as he'd prayed that she would do to, to show that that was, who was chosen, that uh, you know she gave him to drink, and then she also drew drink for his camels also. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that he's, uh, you know, at this point in verse 21, where he's wondering whether his journey is prosperous or not, that, you know, he's, he, he, he's, he's surprised. He's like, is, is this the one? She, she's, done, she's done what I've, I've prayed for God that she would do. And uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, let's, let's continue forward here, and uh, let's look at uh, verses 22 through uh, 33. And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of half shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands and ten shekels weight of, weight of gold, and said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethel, son of Michal, which, uh, Mil Milcal, which, uh, Milka, which bear unto Nahor. She said, Moreover unto him, uh, We have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master, Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and of his truth. I, being the way of the Lord, lead me to the house of my master's brethren. And the damsel ran and told them of her, of her mother's house of these things. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man, unto the well. And it came to pass, when he saw the earring and bracelets upon his sister's hands, and when he heard the words of Rebekah his sister, saying, Thus, thus, spoke, thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and behold, he stood by the camels at the well. And he said, Come in, thou blessed, be, thou blessed of the Lord, wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house and room for the camels. And so we see here that uh, you know, afterwards he, he goes ahead and uh, begins to uh, you know, give her this jewelry. He gives her this golden earring, a half shekel, and the, the uh, two, two bracelets, being ten shekels of gold. So in total that's about four and one-fifth ounces of, uh, of gold that, uh, you know, that, that, that he's uh, you know, given here. It's kind of this, you know, uh, the marriage proposal um, that he's uh, you know preparing here, and uh, you know she she explains to him who who he is. You know again go, and again goes through that uh, lineage, showing that she is uh, you know re relate uh, who she's related to, and you know, he sees that uh, you know she is uh, of you know Abraham's family, and you know, he he sees that everything is it, it was, is is working out here, and uh, he asks if. There's a place for uh, for them to lodge as well, and she says that there's, you know, we have straw and more than enough food and a uh, place for you to for you to stay in, and uh, you know the, the servants just you know, overwhelmed with joy here, and he bows his head and he worships the Lord, and you know he, he again you know he 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 uh, praises the Lord God of of his master Abraham that he hasn't left him out there and and. Uh, you know, by himself, and that his his mercy and his truth, you know, has ha, has been shown. And, and then you have the uh, I being in the way of the Lord, lead me to the house of my master's brethren, which is, 
which another way to say it would be, you know, right to the house of the relatives of my master, the Lord has, has led me. You know, like the Lord's led me here. And then, you know, immediately we see that uh, Rebecca goes to her mother's house and, and tells of these things. And, you know, Laban is, it, he runs out and meets the man and he has everything ready, you know, to, to bring him into the house. You know, he says, you know, he, he, and he literally asks him, you know, Come in, you know, come in, you, you that uh, you that's blessed to the Lord. Why are you standing outside? You know, come on in. We've got plenty of plenty of place. I've prepared a, a room for you and your camels. You know, you know come in. They're immediately welcoming to him. All right, and then uh, let's uh, let's look on at uh, verses uh, yeah, thirty-two and thirty-three, and and and. Uh, and the man came into the house and ungirded his camels and gave straw and a provender for the camels and water to wash his feet and the men's feet that were with him. And they were set meat before to eat. But he said, I will not eat until I have, I have spoken by Aaron. And he said, speak on. Uh, so here he, you know, he, we see that he brings them in and you know, gives them their, their food, you know, washes their feet. Again, you know, very long journey they would have... It, their feet would have been, you know, disgusting. You know, he, so he's he's in there welcoming them, welcoming them, them in, and you know, he's laid out this food for them, and he's like, "I'm not ready to eat until uh, until you hear what I want to ask." And uh, you know, Laban, I'm sure is is ready to hear what he, he knows what he's going to ask, and is ready to hear. It. And he says, "Speak on." All right. So uh, let's look at uh, our next verses here, where he uh, where he makes his request. So we're going to read a. Uh, 34 through uh, 49, and he said, I am, Abraham, uh, I am Abraham's servant, and the Lord hath blessed my master greatly, and he has become great, and he hath given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and manservants and maidservants and camels and asses, and uh, Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old, and unto him hath given all that he hath. And my master made me swear, saying that thou shalt not take a wife, uh, to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, in, who, in whose land I dwell. But thou shalt go into my father's house, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son. And I said unto my ma master, Peradventure the, wo the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, the Lord, the Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee, and will prosper thy way, and thou shalt take a wife of my son, my kindred, and of my father's house. Thou shalt be clear from this oath when thou hast comest to my kindred, and if they not give thee one, thou shalt be clear from my oath. I came this day into the well, and I said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if thou wilt not do uh, prosper my way which I go, behold, I stand by the well of water, and, I, and it shall come to pass that the virgin cometh forth to draw water, and I say to her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. And she say to me, Both thou and I will also draw for thy camels. Let the same be the woman whom the Lord hath appointed out for my master's son. And before I had done speaking in mine heart, behold, Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down into the well and drew water. And I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. So I drank, and she made the camels drink also. And I asked her, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethel, uh, Bethel uh, Nahor's son, whom uh, Milcah bare unto him. And I put earring upon her face, and the bracelets upon her hands, and bowed down my head, and worshipped the Lord, and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. And now, if you will deal with me kindly and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me that I may turn to the right or to the left. All right, so uh, we see here that he uh, you know, gives him the whole story. You know, he starts from the beginning, from where he had, had uh, been with Abraham and had, had sworn unto Abraham and the, the, the specifics of what he had sworn. And uh, you know, he, he talks about his prayer and how his prayer was immediately answered by Rebecca coming, and 
and you know up to, uh, and everything up to this point that uh, you know had happened he shares with him and then uh, he ends that with you know asking him to uh, you know m- you know let basically let me know are are you going to uh, allow me to take her back to to Isaac uh, or if not go ahead and let me know now uh, so that I know which way to depart you know how how am I, how should I leave so uh, you know Laban uh, uh, hears this and let's look at uh, verses 50 and 51, or I'm sorry, Laban and uh, Bethuel, her father. Uh, Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing that proceedeth forth from the Lord, we cannot speak unto thee of bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee, take her and go. Let her be thy master's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. All right, so uh, we see that they they both had... uh, he had say in that, and in fact, uh, we see that Laban was actually mentioned first. So he has just as much, if if not maybe more, say in, in what uh, you know, what's what's going on with with this. And uh, yeah, he he sees that this is that this is the Lord's doing. Yeah, you know, he says you know basically the thing that has proceeded from the Lord. You know, this is the Lord's doing. And then he he gives him this kind of unidentified answer here that we cannot speak to the bad or good. That uh, you know, it's basically not for for them to say. Uh, but he said that, you know, you know, Rebecca's before you, you know, go and take her and, uh, you know, let her be the uh, master's son's wife as the Lord has spoken. You know, that this is basically in the Lord's hand is, is uh, you know, what he's, what he's saying to him here. And so uh, let's look at, uh, you know, these, these, these next verses as, as he reacts to that. So let's look at uh, 52 through 54. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard these words, he worshiped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and raiment, and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave to her brother and to her mother precious things. And they did eat and drink, and the men that were with him, and tarried all night, and they rose uh, up in the morning and said, Send me away unto my master." Right, so uh, you know he he hears these things and you know he he rejoices in the Lord. You know he knows that the Lord is has taken care of him this far, and he he's sure that you know the Lord is uh, that Rebecca is the woman that he's going to bring back to Isaac, and that she's going to be the one that will marry him. And uh, we see that you know he he worships the Lord, and then immediately starts giving her these these gifts of. Uh, of jewels of silver and gold and and raiment, you know, clothing, and gives them to Rebecca and you know, all these precious things. You know, basically, he's he's given that dowry already. You know, he's uh, yeah, he he sees that this is something that for sure the Lord is going to take care of, and we we see that uh, you know that that faith here. And so uh, let's look on at these uh, these next verses. Uh, you know, which is. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about this because I find this interesting that, you know, even though that they had asked Laban and, uh, and you know, her, her father Bethuel that uh, Rebecca is the one is, that's going to have the, the final say. So let's look at uh, verses uh, uh, 55 through 60. And her brother and her mother said, uh, Let the damsel abide with us a few days, at least ten. After that she shall go. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath uh, prospered my way. Send me away that I might, may go to my master. And they said, uh, We will call the damsel and inquire her, uh, inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebekah and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. And they sent away Rebekah, uh, their sister and her, no- and her nurse, and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou, thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. All right, so uh, you know, we see here that uh, they're, they're not quite ready for her to, to, to leave. And uh, the, the, the thought of her being that far away and, uh, and, 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 and leaving them, you know, she, she, they ask if she can stay there for a few more days, at least 10. And uh, you know, the, the, you know, the servant asks if you know, he can go ahead and, uh, and take her back. And they, they say, well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll ask her and see what she says. So uh, they, they call her down and, and they ask Rebecca, you know, are you willing to go ahead and go with these men? 
And uh, she, she answers that I will go. And so uh, you know, she, she's, she's, she's ready to go. She sees that the Lord has, has worked through this and this is what the Lord wants her to do. And so she says that she's going to go back with them. And uh, we see that uh, Re- Rebecca goes and, and, her, ner- and her nurse, and, uh, you know, her, her nurse uh, Deborah. And uh, you know, we see that uh, you know, her nurse Deborah is mentioned later on in uh, Genesis chapter 35 and, and, and verse 8 where or she later passes. Uh, but you know, Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died, and she was buried beneath Bethel under an oak, and the name of it was called uh, Alon Bak- uh, Alan Bakath. And so, you know, we we see that, th- that this is the uh, this is the nurse it's referring to. So Rebecca and her nurse, uh, they go and uh, you know, they go on with with the men to their back to Abraham in. Uh, you know, as as they're leaving, we see that they uh, bless Rebecca. You know, they say that thou art their, thou sister, and they say to be the mother of uh, thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of uh, of those which hate them. And, you know, it's a, it, it's amazing that you know we, we see this this number that's you know innumerable, you know thousands of millions, and then uh, you know it, it sounds far fetched and crazy, but then you think, well, there's there's six billion people in the world today. Or it may even be seven billion now, and so you, you see that these things that you know have have been promised to these people like many many years, thousands of years ago by God. You know, you can see that it that you know these blessings and these things that he's he said you know are are in fact possible through because of him. You know, we see that you know she she is uh, you know close to being that mother of these thousands of millions because uh, you know through uh, through what the Lord has done. All right, let's uh, let's look on at the uh, these last verses here. Let's look at uh, you know, sixty-one through uh, sixty-seven and close out the chapter. And Isaac came from the way of the well of uh, Laharo, for the uh, for he dwelt in the in the south country. Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eve at the eventide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the, cam- the camel. For she said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. All right, so we see here in these uh, closing verses that you know, Isaac uh, you know, is you know, here at the, at the well, and uh, that, uh, that, that name of the well means that uh, the well of he that liveth and uh, seeth me. You know, so you know, he's... Which I, you know, I think is amazing. You know, he that that, that liveth, because you know we we're, we're starting to see you know how we're, you know how we, we can connect this you know to, you know, to God here and uh, you know God in His entirety and and uh, you know so we see that you know Isaac the son is at the well that of he that liveth and uh, and seeth me. So you know he's he's there at the well of he that liveth and and seeth me and you know Isaac you know goes out and he's he's meditating in the field in the in the evening. You know, so, so he's out, and I'm sure he's thinking on, on uh, you know, concentrating on God and His Word, and 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 he sees and he sees the camels are coming, and uh, you know Rebecca sees him far off as uh, as well, and uh, you know she asks, you know, what is this man that walketh in the field to meet us? So you know she she notices that, that you know she knows that this is probably him that uh, she's going to be married to, and uh, the servant asks answers. You know, it is my master, and so she she takes a veil and she covers herself. You know, she's you know, she's she's getting prepared to meet him, and she knows that, you know, the the, the wedding's here. You know, they're they're going to meet and and they're going to be married, just as you know, have been promised and told. And the the servant goes out and tells Isaac all the things that that, that he had done. And uh, so Isaac uh, you know takes her, and uh, you know he marries her. And uh, we we see that he he loves her, 
and uh, you know he's and he's comforted by her. Uh, you know, so so we see that you know the the two you know had had been waiting to you know be brought together, and God had brought them together. And uh, you know, I, I like this this portion here that it that ends out here in this uh, explanation in, in in my teaching book here that says that this 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 chapter is called the divine romance. And uh, you know, when we consider it, it can be considered as a uh, symbolism or an allegory for for God and uh, and the church. You know, we see Abraham the father, we see Isaac, you know the son Jesus Christ, and we see the servant, the the Holy Spirit. You know, the, and the the and you know the servants, the, the the servant, the Holy Spirit is out there and you know beckoning those to come that that, that will you know under the son, under Jesus Christ, that uh, you know that that we may be that we may be. Uh, you know, brought together that you know the son Jesus you know he desires that uh, that bride that's without spot or wrinkle you know to be able to to present that you know that's what the father wants to present to the uh, uh, to the son and so we see that the Holy Spirit is you know out and is you know, giving the gospel you know giving the good news to anyone that, that will hear that and so uh, you know that's what we want to uh, want to see and, and remember that that's that this this little picture here is you know how how it should be for for us you know once we, you know, once we're, we're we're brought in and you know we're brought into uh, you know we're brought into the family that we want to keep that we want to keep and keep helping uh, you know the Lord bring bring others in and we want to make sure that everyone has the has the story and knows about you know, what what God has done for us that and and how He can how He can guide us and. You know, that, that he is the one that, that lives and uh, and sees us. All right, so uh, I hope that th that you know, has been uh, you know a blessing for you, and that you know you can you can use that and and you know, think upon the, that this week, and you know, see just how how good God is, and uh, you know how 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 your faith can be rewarded here. All right, so I'll go ahead and close us out here in a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you so much for this day. Uh, God, we thank you so much for this uh, reading that you've given us today, Lord. Uh, God, I thank you for uh, you know allowing and guiding me through that, Lord. That, uh, and I hope that you would allow that to uh, touch anyone's heart that they, that hears this. You know, whether they be here or in the park.